to Morvinster. I was born in the Bronx, New York, in December 1941. I've always felt responsible for World War II. The first thing I remember liking that liked me back was food. I had a bad puberty. It lasted 17 years. I'm a high school graduate. I went to art school. My entrance exam was on a book of matches. I decided to move out of the house when I was 24. My mother still refers to this as the time I ran away from home. Eventually, I ran to Minneapolis, where it's cold, and I figured I'd keep better. Now I'm back in Manhattan. New York, this is your last chance. walking down the street, would you say, there goes a fat person? <laughs> Randy, come on, no. Uh, I have to remember to suck in my stomach. Also my thighs. <laughs> and, uh, gee, you're all a flutter. Are you in love? No, no, I'm not really in love. I'm in like. Yeah, I am crazy in like. Man, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe I'm going on my third date with him. I mean, a third date. Gee, that's practically a relationship. <laughs> I'm in a relationship. Right. And you were the one who kept saying, I'll never meet anyone, it'll never happen. I'll spend my entire life drifting aimlessly from one Baskin Robbins to another. <laughs> I know. What do you think? Nice. Yeah. And you see now? Yeah. Tell me about this guy. What's he like? Oh, I don't know where to start. His name is Jimmy. Yeah? He's a mailman. He said this great thing about ice cream. I said, I said, I like chocolate better than Rocky Road. Chocolate's more subtle. And he said, I know. Rocky Road always seems like it's trying too hard. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful thing to say? It is. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to say. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful. He sounds terrific. Oh, he is. He's like someone you'd see on public transportation. You know what I mean? No. Who could know what you mean by that? Like one of those guys you see on the bus reading the village voice with sensitive eyes. And they always get off the bus before I have time to tell them that I'm a lot cuter on the inside. <laughs> hey, listen, you better hurry up. Or you're going to be late to meet him. Yeah, right. Brenda, this is so great. I can't ever remember seeing you like this. So where are you going to meet him? At the bus terminal. What? Well, it's convenient. The bus terminal is a very good place to leave for New Jersey from. New Jersey? What's there to do in New Jersey? Except go to New York. <laughs> we do a lot of things. We drive around, walk around, fool around. Uh, so he lives in New Jersey, huh? No, he lives in Brooklyn. But Jimmy says New Jersey's a lot quieter. And he likes to travel. Maybe a hat would help. Do you have a hat? Yeah, sure, in the closet, friend. Uh, listen, um, someone who likes to travel has Paris as the main goal. Or London. Never Newark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, Rhoda, what difference does it make where we go? When you only see a guy once a week, where doesn't matter much. Wait a minute, Brenda, why uh, do you just see this guy only once a week? Oh, well, he's only free Thursday nights. Uh -huh. uh, I look like a fruit fly. <laughs> well, gee, I can't wait to see you tomorrow and hear about uh, this date. Oh, well, what are you doing at 11 o'clock tonight? Mm, laundry. Why? Oh, well, I'll be home by then, and I can tell you all about it. At 11? Why so early? Well, Jimmy says he has to get home by 11 to walk his dog. Wait a minute. Why can't you go with Jimmy to walk his dog? Well, it's dark out, and uh, he's afraid I'll be attacked. So, uh, won't the dog protect you? That's who he's afraid's gonna attack me. <laughs> hiya, Joe. Well, hiya, man. Anything wrong? Yeah. What is it? Well, it's not gonna be easy, but, um... I guess I gotta tell you. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, I do. Rhoda, 
I'm selling my car. <laughs> oh, I was so worried there. A million terrible things just went through my head. All of them ending with, but there's no reason we still can't be friends. <laughs> Then why are you selling the car? You'd love that car. Yeah, but I love food and a roof over our heads more. And with the business so rotten, we just gotta find ways to cut back. Yeah. And keeping a car in the city is too expensive. Yeah, you're right, Joe. It needs a car. We're married now. We can make out here. <laughs> yeah. But selling a car because you're short on dough, Rhoda, that is big. Well, now, listen, if it really bothers you that much, then don't sell it. We'll manage. No, it's too late. I already put an ad in the paper and I, I stuck up signs in the, uh, you know, the dry cleaner. Yeah. And over at the market. So the calls will probably start coming in tonight. Yeah. And some of them are bound to be from weirdos. Yeah. Tell me what your car looks like naked. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you always made me feel better about selling the car. Okay, Joe. Good. Now listen, uh... Are we okay on the car thing now? Because I got a thing too. But you were there first, so I don't want to go into my stuff until we know that you're completely finished. Well, what's wrong? Grand is going with a married guy and doesn't know it. What makes you think so? Okay. He only takes it to New Jersey, where the friends of the wife won't see them together. He's busy every night but Thursday. He has to be home at 11 o'clock, and he has never once invited Brenda to his place. Listen, so the guy likes Jersey. And as for dating Brenda once a week, maybe he sees other people the rest of the time. And as for coming home at 11, well, maybe he's got to go to work early. How do you like that? I had this terrific case built up against this guy, and you just knocked it down in two seconds. <sighs> then you think he's single? No, he's married. <laughs> no, but if he is married, there's nothing that you can do, and there's nothing that you can say. All you got to do is just... Leave it to Brenda, and she'll find out, and she'll break up with him. I mean, let's face it, the only way to learn is by experience. But why does Brenda have to learn like that? Uh, why can't the Girl Scouts print a manual for adults? <laughs> I mean, they teach you to spot poison oak and then let you walk right through a patch of married men. <laughs> Look. Rhoda, no matter what you say to Brenda, odds are she's not going to listen and she'll only end up resenting you for it. Well, better that than I just let her be the other woman. Well, you don't have the right to live her life for her. Since when do I need a right to care about my own flesh and blood? You sound just like your mother. Joe, I'm turning into my mother, aren't I? Huh? Go ahead, you can tell me. I know it. I know it. Am I getting shorter? <laughs> Now listen to me. I know you love Brenda and that you want to protect her, but Rhoda, don't. You're right. You, of course. You're right, Joe. I, I'm not going to interfere. Great. Even though I'm dying to. Did you hear that? That was right out of the mouth of Ida Morgenstern. <laughs> Come on, you're not going to turn into your mother in just one day. Oh, Joe, it's not just today that makes me think of this. Uh, I haven't told you this, but some nights... Huh. When the moon is full, I start feeling that I am growing rollers. <laughs> I get this yearning for sensible shoes. And I find myself standing by the window, baying at Miami. <laughs> yeah? Oh, thank goodness there's someone down there. <laughs> Who is this? Carlton, this is Rhoda. Oh, good. This is Carlton. Yes. Listen, could you put my uniform in the dryer? It's in the middle washer. You set the dryer on air fluff. I don't want my epaulets to shrink. If you need any more instructions, just give me a buzz. Sounds like you got one going already. <laughs> What? You'll never guess what? What? Try to guess. You'll never guess, but try. Here's a hint. 
It's the last thing in the world you'll ever guess. Uh, we're the washing machines and they're the people. Rhoda, Jimmy asked me to go away for the weekend with him. You're kidding. No, no he just turned to me and said, let's go to Vermont next weekend. Vermont? I even love how the word sounds. Like one of those thoughts you close a letter with. Write soon. Tell me what's happening. Vermont Brenda. <laughs> Able, he's free to get away for an entire weekend? Yeah. <clears throat> not just uh, Thursday night and not just to New Jersey. Apparently he has no one he has to check with. Maybe he really has a dog. Brenda, um, you're telling me that he has invited you for a regular weekend? Yeah, yeah, just a regular weekend. The kind that if Mom knew about it, she'd have both his arms broken? Right. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Brenda, I can't tell you how relieved I There's am. There's only one drawback, though. Yeah? He has to stay with the guys in his union. Oh. But uh, I'll be at the Holiday Inn up the road, so I still get the free continental breakfast and everything. <laughs> Brenda, for the first time in my life, I'm going to know what the travel-sized tube of Crest is all about. <laughs> Brenda, there's something that I wasn't going to say, but now I got to. Uh, this guy you're dating, I think he's married. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. No, 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 now think about it. He has to be home by 11. Huh? And, and he, he never goes out in the city. Now, a weekend together at separate motels. Now, those are all symptoms of a bad case of marriage. I told you that 11 o'clock thing is because he has to get home to his dog. Brenda, please believe me. I've had to clean extra four. Count them four crying girlfriends who are absolutely positive that their guy was uh, getting home to his dog. Canary cat horse. <laughs> I don't believe you. I know he's not married. I'm telling you. Because if he was married, he would have a ring around the third finger of his left hand instead of a Band-Aid. <laughs> a Band-Aid right here around his finger because he cut himself. Yes. And it's taking a long time to heal. Leave me alone. Brenda, he's married. The man is married. He's not married. What will it take to convince you? If you just met him. Okay, that's good. The four of us will go to dinner and not on a Thursday. Okay. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Any meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. <laughs> and I'm sure for this special occasion, he won't even have to be home by 11 o'clock. You're on. And you can even choose the restaurant. Any place in New Jersey, you name it. <laughs> Just drank all four waters. <laughs> Where are they? What's he doing that's holding them up? Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe she's the late one. No way. Brett has been dressed for this since last Sunday. <laughs> oh. Boy, I hate people who are late. Oh, come on, Rhoda. I hate him. <laughs> Rhoda, you're not, you don't hate him because he's late. You hate him because you think he's married. Sorry, I, but I, I can't understand that my sister cannot look at this guy and see that he is married. I was worried. What happened to you? <laughs> Why did I just yell across the restaurant? My mother. Hi, Ro. Joe. Hi, Bren. Hi, Brenda. So, we couldn't make it, huh? He didn't show up. Well, listen, don't worry. Come on. What do you mean he couldn't make it? He's right here. Where? Oh, yeah. I see him. Here he comes. How'd you know that was him? Who could miss him? That man is not only married, he's a fugitive. <laughs> you know what I said about being charming tonight? Yeah. The deal is off. Uh, Rhoda, Joe, this is Jimmy Klein. Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy my Hi, sister Jimmy. Rhoda How you and doing? Joe. Oh, hello, brother. Nice to see you. Hiya. Hi. Why don't you uh, sit in? There are so many lights in here. 
Why is it so bright in here? Don't these people know there's an energy crisis? Light. It's like King Solomon's mines in here. Sorry we're late, but I, I guess it's, it's my fault. Oh, no, it's not your fault that you couldn't stop home and you had to change your clothes at that gas station. <laughs> what? Why couldn't you change your clothes at home, Jim? I mean, <laughs> going to a oh, gas miss. station... Well, we're here to have a good time, and I don't think we should go to a place like this without ordering one of the specialties, right? Right. Uh, would you, uh, help us here and uh, tell me about some of the cute drinks that you, you have? Hey, I just take your drink order. I don't do small talk. <laughs> hey, you don't have to be so uptight. Come on. I'm sorry, but did you ever have to work in a grass skirt? <laughs> I see your point. Guys think they gotta make jokes. Your grass is dead. Want to get mowed? <laughs> no jokes, I promise. Uh, I'll have the Bally Highball. I'll have the, uh, the Mount, uh, Fujiyama. I'll have a Diet Fujiyama. And I'll, I'll have the, uh, same as Rhoda. Must be terrific, being a single guy in New York today. <laughs> Tell me what you, uh, single guys do. Um, nothing. Nothing? He doesn't mean nothing, nothing. He means nothing special. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing wrong. Hey, how about that traffic coming over here, huh? Oh, yeah, really, I'm not kidding. I know what you mean. You know, that's why I'm trying to get rid of my car. Oh, well, hey, I, I might be interested in buying a car. Oh, yeah? yeah well, right now I have a 59 DeSoto station wagon. It's unusual. You know, for a single man to drive a station wagon. I mean, it's your classic family car. A surfer would drive a station wagon. A, surf a surfer would drive a station wagon. Uh-huh. Pretty hard to hang ten in the East River, Brent. <laughs> well, what kind of car are you selling? Oh, 73 Cougar. Fabulous car. I, I've never actually uh, driven a Cougar, but it is one of my favorite uh, uh, animals. <laughs> Oh, here they are. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a Fujiyama. A diet Fujiyama, right? Oh, I No, I'd like to propose a toast here. What, what are we toasting? I don't know, but make it fast. I got some lava on my wrist. <laughs> to, um, truth. <laughs> That's really crummy, Rhoda. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, uh, how did you happen to cut yourself on your, you should pardon the expression, ring finger? <laughs> Rhoda. You're right. Joe, you're dead right. Jimmy, I'm sorry I've been sniping at you. There's no excuse for it. Except I think that you're married. <laughs> Oh, hey, there's no need to apologize. Well, I think there is. I'm sorry. That I think you are married. Oh, Jimmy, are you married? A little bit. <laughs> sort of. Well, yeah. Yeah, but only for three years. So I'm uh, just a thing on the side, huh? I don't want to be a thing on the side. I want to be a thing in the middle. <laughs> Could you go along knowing I was liking you more and more and not tell me you were married? Well, I'm a very weak person. Anything else? No, that's about it. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, sorry. Did you want something else? No, I think I've had about enough of you. And you. Excuse me. Brenda, listen, I'm sorry, but I, I had to do it. It was for your own good. Then how come I feel so lousy? I'm going home now. Brenda, listen. Joe, I'll meet you in the car. Now, miss, can we have a check, please? Hey, I didn't think it was any of our business whether you're married or not, but since it's out in the open and everything, I just want to tell you that I think you're a creep. <laughs> straight uh you want me to forgive you for butting into my life that's it 
For me to do that, you have to promise never to do that again. I can't do that. Not and mean it. Okay. Uh, I have a counter offer. Good. Uh, you have to promise to try to never do it again. I can't. Brenda, I just tried not to. How can I not butt into your life if I see something that may be going to hurt you? Don't worry. Look how long it took me to find someone to hurt me this time. <laughs> Brenda, I could have kept my mouth shut. If only I didn't see that Band-Aid. Uh, listen, I guess I kind of knew all along that he had to be at least semi-married. <laughs> I figured. You know, there's just some things people don't want to believe. Like that time you told me how babies were made and I didn't talk to you for a week. <laughs> Listen, I felt the same way when I found out. Now it doesn't bother me so much. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. We both know I'm going to forgive you. We both know you're going to get forgiven here. That's no secret. Ah, oh, Brenda, you're going to get over this. Three weeks maximum. Yeah, listen, it wasn't a total loss. Now I can write a book on where it's at in Jersey. <laughs> What? I'm not accusing you of anything, but you were uh, just down in the laundry room? Yes. Well, I'm not accusing you of anything, but I put something of mine in the laundry basket down there, and, and the something and the basket are both missing. Yeah. This is not an accusation, mind you, but you were down there. Okay. Carlton, uh, wait a second. I'll, I'll, I'll check my basket. <laughs> Could you describe the article you're missing? Half empty. You got it. <laughs>